Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another comic book review, and this time we're doing Fantastic Four Antithesis number one. Alright, before I get into it, I want to just drop out a massive spoiler alert. I am talking spoilers for this issue. Only this issue, though, so just a heads up before we get into this too much. I got the laptop out here. I jotted stuff down. I'm going to try not to just read word for word uh, off of this. Uh, I'm going to talk about everything I think about it, and uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff going up over me, so you're not going to see me the whole time, but uh, yeah, just bear with me. I'm trying out a new thing. I did it with two different kind of video files for the Thor thing, and uh, I'm not really sure if I like how that one turned out or not yet, so I'm just going to, you know, mess around and do this one a little bit differently. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about, I have three different... Um, kind of areas in this. I have the first part, we're going to talk about the art, second part, the story, and then the third part is the review portion of it all. So we're going to jump in right now and talk about the Neil Adams artwork. Alright, so the highlight and major selling point of this book was definitely Neil Adams. He's probably, this is probably a little bit of a hot take, maybe not, he's probably the most iconic comic book artist ever. So, it was pretty exciting for, you know, a fanboy like me to hear that, uh, yeah, Neil Adams is finally going to do Fantastic Four for the first time. It was pretty exciting. It was a little bit less exciting to hear that it was just a four-issue miniseries, but I'll take what I can get. He didn't disappoint. Uh, so, this is where it really shines, is the art, and I think the, the big highlight is how he draws Reed Richards on here. And, uh, as a fan and collector of Stan and Jack's Fantastic Four. I'm not going to say this lightly, but this is the best Reed Richards in here. The paneling is amazing in this. You get all of that classic Neil Adams goodness. And uh, everyone loves Neil Adams. I don't have a whole ton of anything to say that's not great about this. I, mean, I can just, uh, you know, if you wanted to go into this and talk about the art, you can just say, it's Neil Adams. That's, that's all you really need, because it's, it's Neil Adams. He's great. So, you know, I don't have... You can't really complain too much about it, but since it is a review, I am going to say there's one thing I really didn't like, and I don't really like the way he's drawing Ben Grimm, the thing. Uh, it's not all the time, because on the cover, you can see on the cover, it's kind of, you know, perfectly fine. I like it a lot. But then throughout the actual interior artwork, the thing kind of has like a weak chin a lot, and it just looks... It looks weird. That's the only really nitpick thing I have about the art. It's just the thing has a little bit of a weak chin. Alright, doing the story now, so all of the spoiler stuff is coming out of here. You're not going to see me at all past this second spoiler warning now. So if you don't want it spoiled, go buy it digitally or go read the copy you picked up at your LCS. Then watch the, the rest of this. Alright, so this issue picks up immediately with Neil Adams drawing a full page image of Annihilus that needs to be a poster or an art print on Sideshow instantly. I can't afford original art, but I'd buy it if I could. Anyways, so back to the story. There are dimensional, dimensional portals that have been opening up over New York City from the negative zone, and the Fantastic Four have having to go around and closing them all morning. And Annihilus is, you know, uh, in the main Earth of the 616 universe, I guess. I don't know if, if it's actually 616 or not. Probably not. Doesn't, this isn't in continuity, but he's up there. He's wrecking shit, like always. And, uh, you know, he's doing his thing. So Reed has to come together and, you know, got to use his big brain to find a way to send him back to the negative zones. So pretty simple premise, but fun for a Fantastic Four story. Uh, you know, they stick with the comfort food style and they have the FF gang up on him and uh, grab the cosmic control rod, chuck it through the portal, Ionialis is going to go after it since it's the source of his power, and then Reed seals the portal. Super quick, super simple, nothing really special about the opening of this. Uh, it's just a real cookie cutter, kind of fantastic for, I like, you know, comfort food style story. It works really well for the opening. Then they go back to the Baxter building and have a weekend retreat with the Avengers to go to. So Sue takes the kids and drops them off and then gives us a ton of exposition about the Fantastic Four, but it's already stuff we know, so it kind of just derails the issue altogether. You know, it's Reed constantly distracted by science, which, you know, uh, leaves Ben and Johnny on their own to pull pranks on each other and constantly bicker. So then Sue has to fight for her attention 
with science in all ways, but finds a way to get it. That's an accidental double entendre with the context of this issue. If you've read it, you'll understand. I'm not putting the panel up. This lasts just entirely too long, where she's just having a conversation with this, you know, babysitter that they're dropping Val off with, and it just, it drags the whole issue to a halt, and it just kind of ruins everything that they kind of built up with the Annihilus scene, and then, oh, here's a bunch of, con you know, exposition you already know. And then it ends up, you know, they run off because there's a meteor coming down that's going to smash into Manhattan. And Reed makes a comment that's going to take out, like, 12 city blocks or something like that. So then, you know, they see it, the alarm goes off, they all run out, go to it. Reed gives them some special gear. They all team up, use Seuss power to slow the meteor down as much as they can. You know, it hits the ground in this, but, they, you know, it's kind of unclear where it hits. You know, the, the dialogue and the writing has led you to believe that it didn't hit down and it wasn't that bad. But then... The artwork is a big-ass explosion, so it, you know, it's, it's pretty murky on what actually happened with it. Anyways, that meteor ends up being a beaten, bloody, almost dead Silver Surfer. And just like in, you know, Shades of Infinity Gauntlet, you know, he tells the Fantastic Four, you know, he came from the Comet Galaxy where he was attacked and something's coming. You know, something, you know, powerful's coming, so then Reed... You know, ask the you know the big question. You know, like uh, yeah, you're working with Galactus. Why didn't he help you? And then on the last page, the last panel, you just see Silver Surfer, 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 Silver Surfer go. Galactus is dead. And that's where the issue ends. All right, so back on screen, we're gonna talk about my thoughts about whether I liked the issue or what I didn't like about it and all of that. So uh, this is the second time in like three to four weeks, maybe, that Marvel has killed Galactus in one issue. They just they just straight up kill Galactus in a comic, which kind of like cheapens this story. It kind of hurts the Thor story, too, because it's, you know, they just came out and Galactus died in two stories. And that's kind of, you know, it, it's... It's annoying because, you know, it's reducing Galactus, this all-powerful, godlike creature, this force of nature that you had, you know, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby create in, all the way back in the 60s, in 66, I think, to just be this all-powerful character, and you just kind of, like, reduce it into a plot device, to, you know, be like, okay, well, we need to get this new character over, so let's have him come in, and they'll kill Galactus, and everything will be perfectly fine. No, it's it's kind of annoying, because, you know, Galactus, like I said, is a Stan and Jack creation that is this huge, vastly powerful character in the Marvel Universe, and, you know, just kind of, like, kind of shit on him a little bit, and, you know, just knock him down, and he definitely deserves a little bit better treatment than that. That's the first real knock on this. But the second thing is, um, it's kind of weird about this, because... I guess you can kind of tell from, like, the cover, they're not wearing the black suits like they are right now, the Empire stuff. So it's not really in continuity, but Marvel doesn't really do out-of-continuity stories. They're all... they never really reboot. It's all just everything that happens in this comic is still in the same time frame that happens in every Marvel comic, from Fantastic Four number one to whatever the newest book that comes out next week is going to be. So, but this one kind of, it's not in continuity. There's no way it can be because, you know, Val's a baby in this. Like I already said, they're in the blue classic suits. Silver Surfer, got it right that time, is still the Herald of Galactus. So there's no way this is in continuity. It just doesn't, doesn't happen. There's no way. It's almost like uh, Marvel's using this book as kind of like a, like a DC Black Label type thing. It's just a weird kind of like... If you've been reading Marvel for a long time, you know everything that they do is all in one continuity. So for them to just kind of drop this out here and it just be like so vastly different from what's going on in the mainline, you know, Marvel Universe with the FF stuff in the middle of a big event, it, it, it's just weird. It doesn't quite flow with how Marvel normally works. Maybe this is a new avenue. They're going to try something different out. If they are trying something different out, big props to them. We like when new things come out and new things happen, but... Give me a heads up next time. Alright, so then the next thing that's kind of weird about this is uh, the dialogue for Johnny Storm is kind of annoying. Everything else in here is really good. 
All the other characterizations are pitch perfect. It's Mark Wade. So Mark Wade's a lot of people's favorite Fantastic Four writer. So that omnibus is a really great read. Almost, uh, there's a couple classic stories in there too. So like, yeah, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense how Johnny is so much far behind, so much further behind everybody else. I mean, than in his like dialogue and characterization. But it's just a little bit whack for me. Uh, overall, it just really suffered from that super long exposition dump of stuff we already knew. And, uh, you know, it's a uh, jumping on for this four-issue series, and it nothing really happens with the new story until the last page. And that's just super annoying. The art is great, but, uh, I don't know. It, it definitely seems like it's going to be a Mr. Fantastic story, which is good, because I think that's where Mark Wade excels. But for a, a first issue, and just a standalone... It didn't really work for me. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. It's definitely worth the pick up for the Neil Adams art. And if you are any interest, have any interest in Fantastic Four, definitely grab it. Obviously, I do and I will be grabbing the other three. But just as a standalone single issue, uh, 3 out of 5 for sure. I appreciate you watching this uh, new style review where we only do one comic. Uh, if you stuck around to this, thank you and I'll see you next time.